Welcome to another episode of Friendly Conversations. Today, the topic is the French Throwdown, and uh, well, I'll be by myself, so yeah, I guess you guys are my friends for today. The French Throwdown is a competition that's been going on for a long time in France. The directors there are top, top-notch, uh, super high-level competition in terms of execution and what they provide for their community there in France. Recently, it has also uh, taken on some different shapes and, and sizes. Uh, as the ebbs and flows of the CrossFit game season have changed over the last couple of years. As it stands right now, it's it's positioned between the end of the CrossFit game semifinals and the start of the CrossFit games uh, themselves. And as such is a good opportunity for a lot of high level competitors, particularly in Europe, to uh, have an opportunity to kind of leverage the fitness that they'd you know, worked on getting into semifinals and then have one more chance, not just compete, but also earn some good prize money in between the semifinals and the games for the, those that just missed out on making it to the games. Um, before we dive into the leaderboards here, if you guys have not taken an opportunity to head over to Be Friendly Fitness, uh, check out everything we have going on there. And if you want to support us, the best way to do so is by signing up to support us on Patreon. We'll have some cool things coming down the pipeline that way. So please uh, check it out if you haven't yet. Shifting back to the competition, we're going to start on the men's side of things. And this this year, there were not any uh, CrossFit Games qualifiers that competed in this competition. Last year, there had been a couple on the men's side, uh, but there's certainly there was no shortage of big names. And there were some previous CrossFit Games athletes in the field. As you see there, uh, getting the overall win is Enrico Zanoni. Zanoni, of course, came into the scene last year, made his statement by uh, doing great on the final of the Lowlands Throwdown to go to the CrossFit Games. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it back this year. He did have one really good performance, I think second place overall on the second test, but he had a few no reps that cost him kind of later in the competition. And um, the, the program, I think, wasn't that favorable for him necessarily, as we'll see with what happened at the French Throwdown. So he ended up finishing 17th. However, a good opportunity to you know compete at the French Throwdown. He takes the win. The winning prize purse is uh, twelve thousand euros, which is about thirteen thousand dollars, and that's kind of on par with finishing fifteenth at the CrossFit Games. So this is a great uh, payday for him. Either way, in order to achieve that, he had uh, six top five finishes, two event wins, and um, you know the worst of any head was on the ruck run. And we're going to see a pattern here with uh, some of the men in this competition who did. Well, here overall, but poor on that individual event. And when you start, you know, factoring in that the semifinals this year was dense with the running showing up in, you know, three different workouts. It also did feature a rock, although in a very different capacity. Maybe some of the uh, insights into why they struggled to make the games uh, can be kind of seen here. Second place to Zanoni's Victor Hoffer. Obviously, huge, huge hype surrounding this guy, up and coming youngster out of France. Uh, and representing the home country there on the podium. It was really tight to see if he'd end up making it. He does end up getting the second place spot um, and uh, kind of increasing even the allure that's surrounding him after that great final day of semifinals where he was first and second. His worst workout was also on the Ruck event. He took 33rd, and his work, worst workout at the semifinals was on the opening event, that longer one. But he had six top t uh, five finishes and one event win. That event win coming on a workout that had handstand walking both forwards and backwards. Obviously, his prowess on his hands is world-class, and we're continuing to see some out-of-season competitions throw in some variations of gymnastics. Um, we've seen that. We saw that last off-season in a variety of ways, and again, now we have backwards handstand walking at the French Open. So if it's not something that the you know top competitors in this sport have been working on, I'm sure it's something that slowly but surely they'll start to incorporate into their training. And then rounding out the podium, Yorgos Karavis. He was actually the champion of the French. French throwdown last year. Unfortunately, he had a withdraw from semifinals this year after making the games two previous years. He had uh, seven top five finishes. Did have an event win on the finale, which was uh, Amanda with overhead squats. And that's just right up to his wheelhouse historically. The barbell cycling with some gymnastics is something that he's you know, really well known for. And then you see Keelan Henry there. Also had to withdraw from semifinals, able to return and do quite well here. I know he was a little disappointed to come up uh, short of the podium, but, you know, a good battle amongst some uh, top level competitors. So really strong towards the top. And then I just wanted to highlight in uh, a couple of guys further down the leaderboard in ninth place, Benjamin Barbier. And, and really, it's nothing spectacular necessarily about 
about him, except that I love that competitions like these create opportunities for local guys to kind of get into the field and test themselves against higher caliber athletes. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a guy who is making a push to try to get into uh, a semifinal eventually, and he beat several semifinal athletes in Gregor, Sven, and Tommaso immediately below him in the, in the leaderboard there. And we see Nicholas Bedarte, 13th, representing South America. It's, it's just it's always cool for me when we get that international flair so to have a kind of high-profile South American athlete in the field. And then lastly, difficult to not look at this leaderboard and not talk about Luka Jukic. He finishes 19th down there. And, and really, it's kind of three competitions in a row between Dubai, the semifinal that he also had to withdraw from, and now the French throwdown where he hasn't lived up to the expectation of a former CrossFit Games athlete. So I think that the onus is really going to be on Luca going forward if he shows up to any high-level competitions this offseason to kind of regain that stature that we are used to uh, seeing from him a couple years ago. We'll transition over to the women's side. And unlike the men, there was a female in the field who will be competing at the CrossFit Games this year. Her name is Karen Frey, and she competed at the French Throwdown last year where she was second place. This year, it was, uh, you know, it looked like things were really uh, going up up for her and that she would be the one to, one to beat here. She ends up getting the win, but it was extremely close. She had to have, uh, I think, first first and second on the last three events in order to do so. Uh, she, like Zanoni, cashes that €12,000, $13,000 mark. And, you know, she was 21st at the Games last year. A lot of think a lot of people are looking that maybe she can move forward. And even if she does move up the leaderboard with some of the you know high-profile women that are missing, 15th seems like a fairly reasonable place for Karen to finish at the games. And that's, you know, would be two paychecks in that range for her if she's able to do so. So on the financial end of things is something that athletes certainly have to consider in this sport. And I think some are critical of her decision to compete here where others are understanding that it's a good payday. Uh, and, you know, obviously the cost of getting into the games is is a real thing for these athletes anyway. So the decision to compete makes sense. And it obviously pays off by her uh, getting the win. I think what's, uh, what's really cool about the women's leaderboard here is the next three spots are French women. Emery Granaron, Jeromine Gerardou, and Laura Mungnier. Uh, Granaron <clears throat> has been in the semifinals three straight years. Last year with the smaller field, she was 16th uh, strength and depth. This year, 36, so a similar finish. Uh, she had five top five finishes en route to the second place. And you know, I think that for both her and Jeromine, uh, who was also at semifinals this year, she placed 50th that these are kind of the biggest uh, finishes of their career. And I would say that the French throwdown overall throughout the entire 12 month period of time is right around uh, one of the top 10 uh, biggest events that are out there in terms of prize money, caliber of athletes, prestige, and, and of course the quality with, 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 with which it's run. So extremely gr uh, great performances for both Manny and Jeromina. And we'll see if they can continue to kind of move up the ranks in Europe amongst the women. Uh, not going to focus on too many other women on the leaderboard outside of Sola Sigurd, her daughter, who comes in there at fifth place. And uh, mostly you just want to highlight, you know, this was a, she got off to a bit of a rough start in this competition, was able to close uh, really strong with a second, second and fifth place to round it out, moves into the top five overall here. And I think a very important finish for her, you know, somewhat similarly to, um, to Luca, she just hasn't had the same caliber of finishes at the competition she's so shown up to since making the CrossFit Games last year, where she was obviously incredibly impressive at the semifinal. So I think really good for her confidence to close this on a on a high note, kind of show herself and her fans that uh, she still has what it takes to compete at a high level uh, at, a, at a good competition. Uh, last is Elena Caratala Sanahuya. She was last year's defending champion and takes seventh this year. So a little bit of aggression there, but still representing Spain. And we've seen, obviously, the uh, surge of Spain showing up in a lot of competitions around Europe. We will just uh, briefly head over to the team leaderboard. Uh, there were a lot of semifinal teams that, that basically had the similar rosters competing here. Four of the top five, in fact. That team, Butcher's Lab, here was the Krieger team that took 15th place at semifinals. The team that took second is from Cross at Cannes in France. They were... 34th at semifinals. The third place team was the Butcher's Lab Flake team that was 16th at semifinals. The fifth place team, Nymanen, was uh, 11th at semifinals, barely missing the game. So a lot of those teams, just like some of the individuals, capitalizing on being in good shape to go to a competition like this and compete, uh, earn, earn a little bit of extra money. 
And then lastly, there's this team from Portugal, Nortada CrossFit, who kind of winds their way right into the mix there. They actually had four event wins over the course of the competition. So obviously <laughs> massive uh, potential on the top end. Clearly had some lower finishes to offset that. Otherwise, they would have been the runaway victors here. But a super exciting team competition. Um, it was pretty close. Second, third, and fourth. Eight, eight points between them. Um, and then just one kind of overall general thought that I heard coming out of that French throwdown is about the appeals process. And I just want to mention this here because I think that it's important for anyone who's running these competitions, especially when there are a lot of divisions um, that you're trying to manage to make things reasonable for your team your competition team. I just had heard that there were an excessive amount of appeals specifically coming out of the team division with some high level teams, even appealing upwards of 80% of the total workouts that they completed on the weekend. And I, I think that's, you know, it doesn't really send a good uh, reputation for yourself if you're appealing everything, but it's also just a tremendous, tremendous ask for the competition. So my advice to any competitions out there is, you know, you want to have appeals for situations where they're needed. But leaving the appeals just wide open like that really sets your team up for a lot of work late into the night overnight that can be really demanding and stressful and frustrating. So I think that what CrossFit Games has done this year with uh, imposing a little bit of a restriction on the number that you can have might be something that's worth other competitions adapting. Anyway, I just wanted to you know take a little time to give some credit to the French Throwdown. I know they put on a great show. I have not been able to get over there for a competition yet. I'm really hoping to do so next year. Uh, but they continue to attract high-level athletes, provide a great experience. I spoke with uh, Snorri Baron, who is on site. They're representing many athletes, and he said this, this is uh, a really, really impressive competition for him. And obviously, he travels the world uh, you know, supporting his athletes at the highest level competition. So nothing but good stuff over in the French Throwdown. Once again, a successful year for their team. Wanted to take some time to recognize them. Appreciate you guys sticking and hanging out. Again, if you haven't yet, head over to our Patreon, check it out, see if you can support us. Um, we'll be you know, continuing to provide some great content throughout the summer and building up to the CrossFit Games and then getting into the off season. So until next time, be friendly, our friends.